I'm here on the first step of Free Code Camp's new responsive web design's third project, Learn Basic CSS by Building a Set of Colored Markers. And I'm uh, right here we can see a preview of our final product. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to set the document type or declare that the document type is HTML because we're going to write HTML. And so when our browser renders, sees this file, we want to make sure it knows that we're writing HTML. And so the way that HTML works is we have to put in between two HTML tags. So we have to write out these two tags where everything else is going to go inside. So the first thing we're going to do is create a head element. And so, and we're also going to create a body element. Head element, the head element is going to contain things that are about this page, but won't actually display them here. It might display them in a title, which we'll get to in a second. We also have the body tag, which will contain everything that we see in here that is actually displayed. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the title. And we're going to set it to colored markers. And so we have this, um, this title will be displayed right here. Um, and so we can see the title of this page is Learn CSS Colors by Building a Set of Colored Markers, Step 3, and then freecodecamp.org. So ours would say colored markers. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use the meta self-closing tag, and we're going to define the character set. So ours is UTF-8. Pretty sure that's the most common one. And it's just going to make sure that everything is encoded correctly, which really just means when we type this, this uh, gibberish, or even just like free code camp, all of the letters are rendered properly. So when we write this here, um, the code here knows, or the, the way it dis is displayed, mean it knows that F means F. But we really, in the side the head element, we should never really write anything that will be displayed here. So that was, that was not a best practice. Um, it was just for demonstration purposes. So next, um, we're going to use another meta element. And we're going to uh, give it a name, and it's going to be viewport. And then content. And then we're going to copy and paste this here. And so this is just really going to make sure our site renders properly on mobile devices. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to create that h1 element. And so um, if you remember the preview, it just said CSS color markers, and it was centered. So we're going to start to make that. Um, it's uh, it's a line to the left, but we'll change that soon enough. Um, but we're just uh, really just starting to make the site. Adding some content. So the next thing we want to do is link our two files together. So we have two files, index.html. If I select it again, it'll go away. And select this. This is the styles.css file. So this is where we're going to find how, this is where we should decide how do things look. And um, it'll affect this here. But these files are not connected right now. We have to link them together with the link tag, which is self-closing. Um, and so these are two files that just think of them as two files in a folder. And if we give them, if we use href equals styles.css, um, it just knows, okay, look for another file in the same folder that is called styles.css. Um, if we wanted to use a styles.css from somewhere else, we maybe, let's say, this is just purely hypothetical, but um, example.com slash styles.css was a file that we wanted to use, which is, you really should just write your own CSS. But let's say, we, for um, uh, just for teaching purposes, that um, we're going to use a CSS file from another site, um, we'll have to define https colon slash slash example.com, which is the website, and then we're going to say, okay, look in the home folder for styles.css. Um, that's what the slash means. And maybe let's say it's inside of another folder. Let's say they have a CSS folder because they have so much CSS. Inside of the CSS folder, so we do slash CSS slash styles.css. But we don't need that because we just wanted to use a relative link and look inside of the same directory or folder that we are currently in, which has the index.html file and the styles.css file. Um, so a couple of other things that we want to include. We want to set the relationship to be um, style sheet. So now um, the browser would know, okay, so this file that you're linking right here is one that's going to uh, change the way that the HTML is rendered. And then we also want to set the type, text slash CSS. So the text just means it's plain text, which just means it's just, uh, just letters um, and numbers and symbols 
um, well, not really symbols, but like a semicolon or curly braces. Um, but it's it's nothing too special. And then the CSS means cascading style sheet, which is the type of file. So we define that with the dot CSS um, file extension. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change what how the H1 element looks. So we're gonna use H1 as the target right here, add some curly braces, and inside of them we're gonna do use the text align property. And we're gonna set it to center. Add that semicolon at the end, and look at that. Our H1 element is now in the middle of the page. So the next things we're gonna want to do is we're gonna add some divs. So divs are commonly used if you want to make um, some changes in the layout. Um, and so you might put. Um, so usually people put use div as a container. And funnily enough, um, our class is actually a container. And so. Um, we use this in the last project to make sure that um, all of our different sections with the background and the actual menu um, were, were uh, rendered the way that we wanted them to be. We didn't want them to be too wide and we wanted to have some padding here so it looked nice. So we put it all inside of a div. And for the last step in this uh, first 10 steps, we're going to add another div element. And this one's going to go inside of the container. So let's make sure to indent by two spaces, which it did automatically. Um, and we're going to put the class marker. And then let's put that closing div tag. There we go. 